for coming. And, uh, thank you, Daniel, for having me here. My name is Ricardo. I'm here today to talk about Acton Model in F Sharp and Acca.net. Probably going to try to stay, you know, sit here so you see all the screen better. I will probably half of the presentation going to be in a, in code, so um, it'd be easier for me. How many of you just were feeling are familiar with F Sharp? Okay, don't be shy. Okay, and uh, about the actor model, or Aka. Anybody? Okay. Good. All right. Well, so this presentation, um, I use F Sharp um, as um, you know language to to demonstrate about the actor model in Aka.net. It's not specific about F Sharp, but um, there are few feature that F Sharp um, API has in uh, in Aka that really shine, and uh, there is a one example that really uh, is going to blow your mind. So this is the agenda for today. I will talk about little, you know, better check and uh, what's going on out there. You know, the, the world is changing. Briefly about the Active Manifesto. Uh, and then we're going to jump talk about what and why uh, the actor model, F sharp agent, and. Uh, I won't spend much time there, but the reason because I introduced the, uh, I will talk about the F-sharp agent, is because there is this misconception, misconception between agent and actor. Sometimes people use in the same way, uh, use the same word, but there are some um, different. And uh, ACA, then as I mentioned, the F-sharp API, and then we're gonna jump in code finally. All the slide and, and uh, code sample are already in GitHub. So, and then the presentation, be able to download and play yourself. About me, I'm originally from Italy. I moved in the US actually eight years ago. And now I'm currently kind of living in Washington, DC, where I'm running actually the F Sharp um, user group over there. I have uh, years of experience. You know, I'm not young anymore, but uh, I work for Microsoft and I'm passionate about technology, like I think everybody here in this room. So, one good reason to stay with me, and I think Tom is going to appreciate the slides, is because at the end of the presentation, I will raffle three books. So one of you go home with one of these books, and uh, you just um, go to the many website. I'll give you um, a coupon. At time to check out, you apply the coupon, and it's for free. So I will provide a lot of material. This is the three objectives that I want you to take away. and. Um, the first two are similar, meaning that you know we're living in a concurrent world, meaning that uh, the freelance is over and we have to design application with concurrency in mind and possibly in the beginning. And fortunately, there are tools out there, and uh, I will discuss uh, when we jump in after, that is able to solve these issues and also able to uh, scaling up and scaling out your application easily. So. In the last 10 years, we really see that um, the landscape, the, 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 the world of computing is changing, right? And uh, that um, the demand for concurrency, but also distributed system, is start to, to on demand, it's exploded. Our final customer uh, really want application that run fast, is reliable, and they never fail, right? And with this demand, also the requirement for us to write application change. So if you check online, you know, um, what is hot out there, you know, the, the, what is trend right now, you see all these uh, um, technologies such as cloud computing, React application, and so on, but all combined with this magic word, big data. Everybody, you know, is about big data right now. So as a developer, uh, me and you, really, we need a, a technology and solution to be able to bend this new requirement and, and this, uh, and this, this issue to our will, right? Because in the hand, we still we want to build application, you know, with these uh, features such as, you know, scalable, maintainable, reliable, and so on. So how do we achieve this? You know? What kind of combination of technology and tools we should use? This is a few quotes of uh, some published book. And uh, really what it means is that, as I mentioned, the landscape of uh, Distributed cloud computing really represents a, a dramatic change for our daily day work. We're still today talking about 
solution for concurrency of you know write uh, application they run in a multi-core machine but today now we are facing uh, also a new challenge that we're talking about distributed computer so we're talking about the solution that probably you know, is exponential and the problem briefly you know is a hard to write correct high concurrent system that is truly scalable and of course resilient for tolerance be nice to have a programming model really that uh, uh, solve all these issues for, uh, for, for us and uh, the key should be to be to be uh, simple but you know simple is not easy so how many of you are familiar with the active manifesto so I think that um, with all these uh, question issues um, there are also the, the the arrays of answer solutions such as the Rack Manifesto. And what the Rack Manifesto does, it really set um, the, 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 the need of how your application should be to, to really meet this model. So briefly, you know, response means that uh, your application run fast and run the same uh, way no matter how your stress, I mean your service stress, the payload, right? Because in the end, your, your user doesn't care, just want the application run the same way. Message-driven is an architecture that is um, a loosely coupled and promotes synchronicity for no blocking, and a synchronicity is really the key to build scalable application. So resilient is, um, you know that applications, in applications something can go wrong, right? We get an exception, we have some problem, and uh, when the system is resilient, it's also able to self-heal. Right? Something go wrong, it isolates the, the, the problem and um, correct itself and bringing, ba uh, bringing back the, the, the system in shape. And of course, elastic, this is the key for uh, scaling out and scaling up your system. And when you create, um, when you build a system that react and can contract or expand, add or remove node on the fly upon the, the, the domain that come from, from, from the, the, the user. So I think this slide, pretty much everybody saw something similar in the last few years, right? It's very, it's very current. I like this slide because really it's very simple, but the blue line is uh, the speed of the single core and in red, the number of the core per year. And what it means is that really today we are living in this uh, multi-core era, right? Every device has more than one core, even your cell phone. And um, so there is this evolution toward multi-core hardware. And we're facing the challenge because we're still using, or the majority of, of us still use languages or tools that weren't designed with this issue in mind, the concurrency in mind, right? So we are not able anymore to leverage one single very fast CPU, they can get faster and faster. And the problem is free lunch is over, right? So these days and more and more in the future, machine will be um, delivered with multiple cores. And the reason is that we're able to um, process several tasks at the same time, which is great, but how do we achieve this, right? So I think that uh, we all know that to write concurrent application um, is not a simple task, right? Especially um, correct uh, concurrent application. Like uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, you know we're running problem, you know, such as you know deadlock, race condition, and um, we can write concurrent application with all the language today. But uh, what's the solution? Sometimes you put your primitive, you know, your locks here, or your mutex there, and uh, you know, it works in my machine, then you send the code in production, and after a few months, something goes wrong, because, you know, after, you know, 10,000 calls, you have this deadlock. Well, this is tell us that there is not really a debugger on tool that can tell you or warn you that you put the lock in the right place or not, right? It's really your own. And another, another side is that even the name lock, you know, it doesn't go ahead the performance. And you probably uh, wrap this portion of code with a lock that would be hit every single call 
And maybe you need the log for one call every 10,000 when you really need it for the risk condition, right? So the, 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 the main problem is the share of state. But so there is good news and bad news here, you know, as a, I mean, of you are familiar with functional programming in general? All right. So functional programming, one of the paradigm really promote the um, immutability that really remove the problem from the source because objects are immutable. So the shadow state is not an issue anymore. Now, saying that functional programming is not make your program run faster out of the box, but it's ready to be uh, parallelized with almost zero change in your code base. But then we have another problem. The bad news, you have a month's law. And this is, a, this law really said that uh, anyways your application has a constraint to the portion of your code that is sequential, cannot be parallelized, right? So this example said that uh, if 25% of your code can run in parallel, well, you have a, a limit of 20 times faster. You can run your application 20 times faster, and that's your limit. So another concept besides immutability to run um, or build lock-free application is uh, the concept of natural isolation, right? Is the idea that uh, your component isolated cannot be um, um, it cannot be changed from an um, external uh, effect. Now, the actor-based programming model really deal very well with this law because um, through intercommunication of multiple processors or multiple actors, um, computer can cooperate for the final solution. So the distributed system is a very well solution against this, uh, this second problem we have. So again, just to summarize quickly here, immutability isolation are your best friends. And uh, immutability is also other benefits, such as it makes your program um, easier to reason about. You don't have any more keys checking about, you know, if your object, uh, in which state it is, can be null or null, or, you know, can be different states. But for concurrency point of view, um, immutability isolation are just the, 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 the secret the ingredient for the secret. So, really, as I mentioned, uh, can be both, can be immutability and isolation are great, or you can use immutability or isolation for concurrent application, right? But um, the actor model really forces you to, to use both because isolation is uh, forced through the message passing between actors. So, this is a quick example in F sharp. Um, for those of you who are not familiar, just um, how you create an agent in F sharp. And you can see just, uh, let's see my finger up, anyway. You have an asynchronous block inside your agent that is waiting for receive a message. Yeah, let me see if that's about it. Okay. Or not here. I don't want to cut the cable. Okay, so here is there where asynchronously the, the, your agent is waiting for a message, okay? It's inside an async block. I'm not gonna spend much detail about the async workflow in F-sharp, but just, you know, is um, no blocking. And um, the let with the bang operator is some sort of um, register for your callback when you um, run some async operation, right? So what's happening here is that this agent is waiting for a message and process the message or use some pattern matching to deconstruct the message and process it. But what is really interesting here is this part here. So I use in a mutable object. This is a, a, a .NET dictionary. But because I'm inside the body of the agent, it is trade safe for nature, it's isolated, it's okay to use in a immutable object, right? So this is the Wikipedia definition of the actor model. And really is a, is a multi-purpose programming model that um, support um, concurrency. Uh, I forgot whether I read this analogy, but it was interesting. They, they 
comparing the actor actually like a rental car. It's easy to get a rental car for your company, right? Driving around, and if you break your car, you don't care to fix it. Just leave it there, call your rental company, and deliver you a new car. Pretty much that exactly in actual model. So <coughs> the actual model really did the independent unit computation. And uh, as you can see here, there is a uh, few components. One is uh, this uh, message queue, where you see the message and the messenger buffer. And when the message is received, it just process the message asynchronously. And the extra, the, the, the other messages that are coming are just buffered in queue, so they're now lost. They're waiting to be processed. And again, it's completely isolated, so there is no way that um, other actor or um, anything else can really interact with the uh, internal state of your um, actor. And uh, I like to think also as an actor, like, you know, the um, metro map, like this metro map in DC. So the actor really your your train station. You just receive train as a message and, you know, passengers get in, get out, never. But the main point is really they each station, they're isolated from other train station. They don't care, right? This is the, the core. And the actor model really no uh, a new concept, right? It's been around for over 40 years. In the 73, it was um, this man, Carl Hewitt, uh, wrote this paper about uh, mathematical model for uh, computation. And uh, really, the, the actor programming model raised a level of abstraction to write, you know, log-free uh, concurrent application. So there are three axioms about actor model. I think there is one more. But so the actor you know, can send messages to other actor, create actor, create other actor, and decide how to handle next message. To me, it's also, uh, the actor will also be able to make a local decision, right? Uh, actor can contain a, a, a state inside uh, the, the body, with isolated. And in my experience that I, I wrote several applications using the actor model just to create a fine state machine. Uh, a message or something can, can, can change the behavior of the agent or the actor and really change the behavior and how process the next messages. That's why I said um, one actor is no actor because actors communicate each other. Well, it's opinionated, you know. I think that one actor is fine if you have not just need a state machine, but depending on your requirement, right? It all depends. So, that's the might, you know, the nine niners. That's the reason why the actor got very famous. It's because Ericsson in the um, 80s using Erlang. Anybody be fam uh, familiar with Erlang language? All right. So it really embraced, you know, the, the, the actor model to write um, um, software for telephone, telephony devices. And uh, they reached the 99ers, which is a crazy number because it's 90 milli, um, 90, no, 30 milliseconds down per year. Now, you have to do some homework, check online how we're able to measure that. You can, you can Google it, right? But pretty interesting, actually, how we how were able to, to, to measure it because that was my first question. How, you know, how you can say that? 30 milliseconds pretty low. But so how they, did they achieve that? Well. Uh, they embraced the philosophy of Letty Crash, and we're going to spend some time talking about um, this idea. So, quickly here, really, the actor model is, uh, as I mentioned, bring up a level of abstraction for concurrency, and uh, thanks to location uh, transparency, you're able to communicate actor around all your nodes, and you really need to know where the actor is located. As I mentioned a few times, you know, is a, a synchronous, so it's a very high performance uh, event-driven architecture. And um, the ACA.NET uh, specifically is a benchmark about, um, can handle 21 million messages per second. There are actor, other actors out there, but just to tell you that it's pretty high performance, right? 
but ultimately that's all the reason because I was talking for about 15 minutes is about that the actor is full compliance to the reactive manifesto so go reactive right if you want to build that active application the actor probably is, is a great solution and uh, and again is a use this a uh, asynchronous message uh, fast semantic approach to um, send the message between each other and uh, that allows us to write system that's completed the couple and uh, able to scaling up scaling down scaling up scaling up but also scaling down so f sharp has uh, some nice features building in language such as the async workflow and the mailbox processor which is the agent and so it really shine in distributed system right that's probably uh, one or two characteristics you want to use to build um, scalable application and uh, this is one of the implementation as you remember in the uh, previous code um, one of the benefit the agent really is that uh, you can leverage the core your machine for parallel computing but there is a problem with this code it's not bug well this part here and the reason is because you can reference an agent with a specific instance there is no way that you reference with an address right or so the problem is that an agent is only in process and uh, so we cannot communicate with other processes uh, can only be referenced by any specific instance this is too important there's no um, durable mailbox queue if your process or your uh, agent crash you lost all your queue right and there is no such of um, features such as routing supervision built in there are technologies or fr actually a uh, framework library out there can help you to achieve and you know, overcome these issues but um, agents are not an actor there are some limitations think about an agent is a is a memory slot right so you can put in the memory slot primitive whenever you want both of function right you can send a function to an actor so this idea that is not just sending data but also ch sending behavior and uh, one benefit about the agent is that it really allows you to write in a functional style because you can compose function and maybe send the, uh, the function compose to the final actor to the final agent so before I jump in Aka any question talking too fast talking too slow my Italian accent gets you okay right. so George you're familiar with the Aka right so, and ACA.net is the port of the um, ACA from the JVM um, ecosystem. So, what is ACA? And this is the definition of the ACA, ACA JVM. It's a, it's a toolkit to build runtime building high concurrent um, application distributed, you know, for tolerant and so on. It really, it's just a toolkit. It's, they need to define a toolkit, don't define a library, I don't know, but it really achieve a way. Uh, to write better for performance application both in a very simple way and one of the great benefit about the, the, the actor is that very lightweight you can have uh, 20 no sorry 2.7 million actor in one gig of um, your machine versus I think like almost 5,000 thread <coughs> in a 32 machine and that's provide also benefit because really lets you um, represent or you give the free freedom to represent your uh, your model your domain model with the, with the actor right and <coughs> is able to achieve this this crazy number because an actor is reactive when he's idle and there is no message in a, in a mailbox and doesn't see any message the thread that own the actor just send back to the thread pool the scheduler there are uh, as default use the thread pool but you can plug in different you can write your own but as default the thread pool so very um, low memory uh, footprint and when the message come in the age the actor react and get the thread back from the pool and execute and process the message 
So something go wrong. How your actor system is able to um, keep your system running, right? If nothing go wrong. Well, the answer is supervision. And um, that basically a parental supervision, I mean that your parents is uh, responsible to take care of the child. But we'll see in the next slide what I mean with that. So, and how supervision can solve the error? Well, there are different um, different strategy you can apply. And, but also, one great thing is that the, the, that your supervisor is able to catch the exception of your child and depending on according to the exception they receive, apply different strategies, right? Can be restart your agent, um, resume your agent, and so on, right? An example about that. But primarily, just embrace the philosophy, right? Think about that uh, your, your system sooner or later going to crash anyway. You, you know, you get paranoid, you put your try catch there, and you, um, you know, lose time sleep thinking about how your application can never crash and make all this run. But think about this as a different stage of application. The application, you know, can start, run, execute, and fail. It's just a different stage. And when it, when you, when, when it happens, just deal with that, right? Like do as they do in Spain. Just get a glass of wine, sit down, and don't get bored, right? We do that in Italy too, though. So this is the how Ericsson and uh, thanks to Erla really was able to reach this uh, 99er with electric crash philosophy. They really embraced it, right? And um, well, the error kernel is the small part on your supervision. This part that uh, need to be as small as possible, so always need to be correct. And there are two main strategies, one for one supervisor, which means that if uh, one of your child go wrong, the supervisor just uh, apply the strategy to that specific child and that's it. And your system go back and self heal. Or all for one is that one child go wrong, well, the strategy is applied to all the sibling to the node, okay? Question about supervision? We have a good example, actually. Um, I think that probably another more than six, seven minutes that we're gonna jump with some good, good samples. Any question? All right. Remote team. And um, so ACA is really designed with distributed system mind, right? And uh, it provides out of the box a unified programming model, meaning that you use exactly the same code to run and send message to an actor can be local or a different system or in a different node in your network, right? And this is a, a possible thanks for um, concept about uh, location transparency, which is all the secret to um, going scalable. And location transparency, as I mentioned, really um, lets you send the message and just let the, the, the system take care for you to send the message whenever uh, um, is required. It can be, you know, you're, you're acting in the same process, process the machine or in the network. And this is the, um, the, 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 the path that location transparency use. You have your protocol. There are two out of the box, TCP, UDP, but you can build your own. And actually, also serialization wise, uh, the protobuf from Google, but you're in, you know, you can create your own and use any kind of serialization if you want to. There is actor system, which is the, the, the top root of your system. You only create the system, and then you add your actor and create your, 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 your um, tree structure. The address, this is local host, local machine, but can be machine remote. User, uh, I'm not going to detail there, but user like the guard. Actually, if you, okay. The dash is the system, and then, uh, sorry, the, the, the user up to here, you just you see it's a different color. It's the guard with all the nodes got attached. And then we have slash actor name, which is the, fact, the first actor or the root, but um, the tree. But then you can be a slash, and so on. Can be continue to uh, walk through all your tree. Typical sample. Um, here you create your actor. You can uh, send message directly to an actor, or 
you can use here the select and pass address, uh, address. you can use uh, both ways. Let me ask you, uh, am I familiar with C Sharp or Java here? No? All right. Interesting. Java, okay. So, okay. Pause here one second. I want to understand. So, no Java, no C Sharp. Oh, C Sharp, okay. Oh, uh, now you were shy, right? Okay, I see, I see, okay. It's, uh, who's Cobol? No, I don't believe you. You're so rich right now. All right. Cool. Uh, I, the code sample, actually, you can download it also the C Sharp code sample version too. But uh, if you're not familiar, just replace the let with the var and pretty much the same API. So this is how your system look to your, your, uh, your eyes for, you, for the user perspective, just a bunch of nodes. But what really happened in reality underneath it, the system take care for you to create or and decide where the actor will reside. It can be you know, locally or remotely. And that's all taken care of from you underneath it, thanks to uh, location transparency. So this is why I fall in love with Akka.net. And the reason because I was looking for a framework for distributed system, and there are many there that I don't like. Also Microsoft product too. But uh, then I ran in Akka, say, uh, they do some nice thing, but the F Sharp API actually has something that make very unique. They use Akka.net, they're not even C Sharp and other languages or Java can do. And the reason is that, as you can see in, in uh, this yellow headline, in uh, F Sharp, it is um, feature called code quotation. And what it does is really create an uh, abstract syntax tree of the code that you uh, put between this uh, um, arrow at. And what uh, F Sharp API can do in Akka actually serialize that piece of code. That can be in Akka actually some sophisticated actor in a code sample, very nice. Serialize it, send it locally or remotely, and create an actor to the code that you deploy here remote, uh, locally. It's really nice. So we can do hot swapping, almost like Erlang does. There are some pro and cons. There are some people say there's a limitation, some not. And that's when we discussed about, um, I thought the slide was next, about the uh, type and untyped actor, which is three slides from now, and then code sample from it. But really, this is why. I said, yeah, this is it. This is love here. Uh, I think I should use it. And uh, I'm using, so Akka.net just came out with version 1.0, like really four days ago. But I'm working on a project that probably be in production at the end of May using um, all this framework. Toolkit. So last very important feature about the, the, the Akka is the routing. And really what it does is um, underneath it, uh, the system is able to send messages between actors to distribute and load balance the, 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 the payload um, between actors. So, well, you can create a bunch of actors, and the last there you can just wrap in a, in a, in a round robin group, or even better, using config, you tell to the system, just create two instances, right? So the router here, the third line from the bottom here, it creates two instances of the actor, right? Well, we've seen a code sample. There are two ways you can configure an actor, I mean, the, an system, sorry. can be using these uh, iconics, I forgot the name, meaning uh, just with string, or use a fluent API. And one way, one reason because I prefer this way is because you can even extract this uh, configuration and set them in an app config, an external file, and change your instances dynamically without recompiling your code. But Fluent PI is nice because you can give you know, a compile time error. So there are several strategies. The more important, of course, is broadcasting. So the, rout the router send a message to the all the uh, agents. And one reason is because maybe each agent in a different behavior, so you can uh, compute the message, uh, apply different computation. Of course, round robin, which means you know, old-fashioned, the router sends 
one method uh, to really tackle using an old-fashioned round robin. And um, as I mentioned here in this slide, you can create, you know, a many instances. It can be two, one, can be many if you want to. And uh, you can create algorithms actually that uh, increment or decrease the number of inter instances on demand, right? So your system can scale up uh, on demand. So very elastic. And the round robin group is just uh, like the broadcast and the round robin um, uh, together, meaning that you provide the instance of the route of the, 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 the agent and just maybe different agent, the same no in the same um, no the sibling, but different implementation, right? It's like a mix between the two. So this is the last slide. And uh, so in fsharp.net, we have this type actor, right? Because we, this language has statically type. Like Erlang doesn't have this concept because Erlang is dynamic. And also this is what make um, uh, for Erlang easy to hot swap in the code because it's dynamic. So one benefit about a type actor, because sometimes you want to use an actor or as like a bridge between your imperative language. And really what it looks from the, from, from the outside is just you call a method, right? Now, one benefit of the untyped actor is that if you do, it, that's only for F sharp, but if you do some um, hot swapping, implement you know, an actor remotely, if you use a type actor, you're constrained with a signatory actor, right? So if you change the behavior, the behavior anyways had to um, consider the signature or the message that the actor can receive because of type. So usually it's recommended to use type actor, you know, to communicate with imperative language out the world, but in, in your internal in your system, probably it's better to use an untype. And boring, boring. Aka, well, we start with just download from the, the package, and I think it's time to get some demo, right? All right, so all right, so let's is the font okay? Everybody can see? Cool. All right. So top here is just you know some namespace reference, nothing sexy here, so let's move on here. All right. So line twenty two I create my um, system and Now you're happy, C sharp, right? But yeah, this exactly works the same, right? That's only the difference. So you create your system. Yeah, that's true. So if you're not familiar with F sharp, really, one way to create your actor. Uh, this is an untype actor. You just Create your type, which is a class, okay, C sharp, that inherited from this um, type actor, and you overwrite uh, on receive. Now, there are other methods, I'm not going to go in detail, but uh, so the message here, so F sharp are very strong type inference, so it's smart enough to understand what type it is, but here is exactly the same if I say this message is object type, exactly the same. But if I don't specify, I put the mouse over, you know, I can see, it really tell me the message is the object. So I receive the message, because it's untyped, I have to check what type it is. And I use pattern matching, pattern matching in F sharp, and uh, Thomas, what is the name, the uh, test symbol? Yeah. I forgot I the name. Yeah, so, but anyway, this is like um, C sharper, it's like the is right? This type is a string, if it's, if it's true, moving on. So in this case, do the same matching. If it's a string, the message, they're going to print hello. Otherwise, it doesn't know what to do because it's not a string. It just print, um, I don't know what to do. So something very neat about F Sharp that is built in in Visual Studio is the REPL here. So you're able to select your code without to compile every time your code and send it to the wrapper and uh, it runs it for you. So I pass my reference, I create my, my actor system. Can you see? 
I create my actor type, give my, receive my class, like this. Huh? And um, so here I create an instance of, uh, of my actor. I should say, whoa, whoa. There you go. That's better. So, but actually, first thing I want to do something without. So if I create an actor, echo server, so you can see here that it provides me out of the box an address, right? If you don't say or provide the name for the actor, it just creates for you in this case a dollar symbol. I should put you know a name frag a frame actor. You say I can reference the, I can call this actor using this address. So it's recommended to use um frag. What is it? So if I send a message now, okay, say hello because it's a string, right? If I send a number, it doesn't know what to do. So you say, uh, sorry, this is an integer to I don't know what to do. So very simple. A better approach is uh, to create uh, an actor, in this case, uh, with specialized specialized receive method. So I use the same functionality, okay, here. I create two message here, type, message, and other message. This is a F sharp discriminator union. And uh, think about that you're able to build um, type that, are, that they all have in common a base type. In this case, increment and print and all um, belong to the message. It's like in C-sharp, you have to build your abstract, uh, base class, and then you know from the base class with a lot of code. So this is how you, uh, in F-sharp, you create this community union. Then the actor in this case, I inherit it from the receive actor. So I'm able to um, create specialized receive method. So when I send a message, if it's a message type, this method is, is um, this method is kicking around. If I send the other message type, this other receive is run. And also I'm able to override this unhandle message, which it does exactly what the other untype uh, on receive method was doing. Just is a, is a backlight, some sort of dead, um, dead letter message. So whenever that is no message, other message is, is going to this bucket. And here in line 21, I just create a mutable safe because inside an actor is safe, right? So these two messages, one is imprinting the current state, one is incremented, and one displayed and decremented. So let's run this, um, this piece of code. I create my system. I create my actor. So if I say print right now, it is zero because there's a state zero. If I send three time increment, and then print again, it is three. Decrement display is one because they come twice, but this is the other type of message. So I send to the um, other receive the message. And of course, if I send chow, which is a string, it doesn't know what to do, and that's the unhandled message, right? So this is a, we start to see what F sharp API do so the tell there is a tell and also an ask the different that tell you send a message one way ask you send a message and return back like a, a future waiting for a, a response back asynchronously and um, f sharp we use um, we can use also an infix operator in this case we have left arrow bank for the um, tell or the left arrow question mark for ask, it's just you know to be more succinct. Okay, cool. Now let's do it in a bit more functional way, right? This is what like create our type, our class, and do some inheritance. So pretty disgusting, right? So let's do let's do it a bit more functional. So I create my type here. So first of all, here, the difference is that it's not anymore actor system create, it's system.create. And 
this is a F sharp API. It provides some extra goodies out of the box because this is will be able to serialize my code in code quotation and send it remotely to my actor and, and other few things. So as you can see here, I use a spawn function. The signal to really receive the system factory, which is uh, my system here, the name of my actor, and then a function that really is the, the body of my actor. And we use a, the actor computation expression. And most of the time, what you implement inside this um, actor computation expression um, is expecting a, that the message and, 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 the, and the body really self recurse, it runs self recursively, right? So this message, um, this body actually here, you see I have a return in the hem, in the end of the, the, the body. Actually, this is a multi state actually, but in this case, again, sorry, that's not important. If it can, it's gonna rerun from the beginning recursively, right? So this actor um, has two state. So it start, let's start here with the loop state, okay? So when the actor spawn has been created, this is the portion of the code that's running right now. I send a message asynchronously, I match, I say create, the name is a string here. I deconstruct my message and I print hello, and the, the, the string that I pass. And then I change the state, the state, I say return again, passing this state. So at this point, the actor is running in this current portion of code. So I change the behavior of my actor, right? And the name here is the string that I pass from uh, the, the loop. So now if I pass the same message, I check if the name state is the same of the, 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 the string that I pass in the message, I say hi again, otherwise I reset it. So nothing fancy, but just to provide the fact that you can swap behavior in, the, in an engine pretty easily. And this is two states, but can be many states, right? So let's run this code sample here. And when I'm selecting everything here, any question? I hope there'll be a lot of questions at the end. So I send, hello, Ricky. Hello, Ricky. Now, if I s now the actor changed state, right? So if I pass Ricky again, you're going to say hello again, right? If I pass Ryan, because it's a new name, it reset, and, it, and now it's a, in a, it went to the loop and again, state again. Probably should have changed the name, right? And here I use the F sharp API that is uh, exactly compared to the dot tell. All right, so that was uh, the way you create an actor, right? But let's start to see a bit more, um, something a bit more sexy. Um, what time is it? Okay, so how long should I still go? Because I have the time for all code sample, but there are three that I really want to run that there are probably 12 minutes, and uh, otherwise I can run another. Okay, that's very exciting. <laughs> All right, so I, I'm going to run this extra, so it's going to be probably another 20 minutes total. So don't fall asleep, but stay with me because then you have a free book probably, right? So um, so this actor, uh, okay, this is a, an example. I create my function here from URL. I take a, a string and then make a call outside to download a website, right? 101, hello world example, right? I spawn my actor and then I send my message and if it's a string here, I call my function, I'm gonna print some feedback that hey, it's done. And then sender is part of the body, okay, of my, my actor and I can reference who sent the message. It can be local, it can be uh, out the node, in the network, I don't care, this is the sender. And then I send back the response, okay?
so this is my actor and I send version URL which is my my github something whatever what the what the return we see they use the ask operator right because I'm waiting for a for a feedback okay the task here is a, an async type which is part of the async workflow so it's not computer right away it's a computer on demand that's one of the also I think more powerful concept with the async um, you know that the async await in C sharp that come from the F sharp and one of the few things that F sharp shine is that it doesn't compute right away it return an async type and the good part they can compose all the async unit and then run on one so anyway so the task and then I can run asynchronously and get the response which is a uh, uh, my my downloaded website and get the, the 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 size right now i have internet yes i do so let's run this code pass my string here create my system pass my function get my actor here now I go around for four time passing a different timeout, so probably if I get an exception timeout, it could probably take longer. Dun, dun, okay, so you see the result I have few timeout and then the size of my uh, GitHub. Okay, cool. But what's the what's the problem with that? The problem with that we are in a synchronous world, right? We want to be reactive. So this is a very synchronous, right? So how we can how we can do better? Well, he said, "Well, I know how to do it. I don't. I create my async workflow. Well, here I'm using a file stream, but it returns still in a synchronous type. But I don't go around this code anyway. So I just wrap it in a async workflow, um, run it synchronously, and return. In fact, this type here you can see." is an async of string, right? Now, as you can imagine, you said, send a message and say, don't do this code at home. This is wrong, okay? The reason is that if you run the piece of code asynchronously inside the body of actor, you really break the, 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 the concept of the actor. Meaning, the, the actor run asynchronously for out the world, but inside, it's still single threaded. And in the, the, the message, it need to, co it need to be uh, computed. And when the computation is completed, then the actor uh, exit from the, the state and take the next message from the queue, right? If we're doing this way, it might work, but it's not a good practice because sometimes there are some state in your agent that depends from the some computation and so on. So a better approach, so again, don't do it at home. A better approach Here still using the async with the let bank is the pipe tool, which is built in in Akka.net. And what it does, it really um, say, okay, I run, I run all the asynchronous computation, but without blocking, I'm still gonna wait for the result before continue, right? And of course, F sharp like you know infix operator. So instead to the to do pipe tool, we use the pipe. Bank and uh, left arrow. So it, this is actually what should do it. So let's let's rerun this uh, this code. And uh, bear with me because the last example that I have here, I want to have somebody clap their hands. Okay. That's something very special. So actually, this I don't need it. I was playing with. So, but do you have any question about the async workflow here in F sharp? Do you have any? You sure? Thank you. Yeah, so, so let's go back one second here, okay? Let's remove this and 
I'm going to give you one minute answer because I want it. All right, so this is our synchronous version, okay? From a realizer function, take a string, the signature, you can see, sorry, take a string and return a string. It's blocking. You run it, it stays there until it grabs everything. Uh, it's very <coughs> simple to read about because if you want to put a like catch, you're going to put your, you know, try here, you catch later, well, you, you know. Think about it as a database transaction. You know where to start with it then, right? If you use your API model, a synchronous programming model like in C Sharp or Java, it really it forces you to break the computation in two blocks, in two parts. When you start and then you call back later on, right? It can be from different threads. So then you start to, okay, that's great, where I put my track catch, where the transaction start, when it ended. You always like, what is the best practice, right? So a better approach is uh, running code that looks sequential, you can handle sequential, but run asynchronously without blocking. Are you familiar with C-sharp async and await? No? Okay. Better. So in, in F-sharp, you can change this, um, this behavior running asynchronously in asynchronous, very simple, right? You put in an async block here. You put your turn type here. Right. You change with the async. And now the trick part here is the bank because I now the type of my response is async of string. So it's an async computation, is a unit, right? It's not executed. If you put the bank here, it's a string. Okay? So what it does is that without blocking the current thread, execution. Um, it run this, uh, this, um, this download, I think the load string asynchronously, right? But it waits the response to be completed and then moving on to the response. Now, for instance, if I have the from URL something something, I can run it like this, async start. And what it does really compute it without wait the response. Run a synchro instead, stay there waiting for the response, but still not blocking. Like if you're in a UI, in a WinForm or any kind of UI GUI, um, you can block, you know, try to move the, the windows around or man maximize or minimize, this is blocking. So actually a better behavior should be used the start immediate. In this case, you use the current thread in context. So when they call back, you sometimes you have to, there is an exception of they try, try to marshal the return between you know, um, the result and the, 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 the control that maybe is not created from the same thread because asynchronously the return type can come up from a different thread, right? So this is starting me to use the current synchronization context. So this is, a, but this is probably too much. But did you answer your question? So don't be afraid. I won't respond that long to other question, okay? So anyways, uh, get my handler, my, I do the same thing here. Um, create my actor and I run it. And that what it does here, I really, I should be run all asynchronously without blocking the, 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 the. All right, so there was a, that, then I want to run, okay, let's do a little chat example, then supervision, and then something super awesome, okay? The chat system, uh, this is a solution, and again, you can download it and play with it. There are two solutions. One is the message library shared between the server and the client chat, which is just, you know, connect a request, pass in a string, connect a response, all this kind of message type, you know, you can register or say request, send dispatch my message to everybody. The, the server, of course, is an actor, and here actually I use the Fluent API, not a string, okay? So it's a different approach. 
It's nice because if you do something wrong, it give you a compile time, right? If you have to pull through, you could put a typo, I don't know, it give you a, an exception right there. Why the string to be more careful? Put your local host, the port, create your system with my server. And now the actor, of course, in a loop is waiting for messages and react accordingly. So say request, just say change some color and send to um, all the client the message that I just sent. And all the client, when I send the request to my uh, server, it register and they keep in a state of the loop, okay? So every time, uh, for instance, let's go to the bottom here. When it starts, it is an empty array, okay? When I get uh, a message that it is, hold on, I have to find it. Where is it? Mm, connect request, there you go. Yeah, connect request. I get my connect request message with my username and do some color, you know, to, to print in the UI. And here I append the new client to my current collection and reloop. Okay, so always keep the state recursively. Okay, this is a very functional approach. And then there is the client, of course, that uh, I run the application and I set my username. And I reference here my server through an address, right? So, because that could, could be out of the process, after it would be out of the process. And then again, I send the request, send the message. Uh, this is not important details, right? So I uh, initially I'm gonna send my username, connect the request, and then I just while through, which is, you know, Functional programming, F sharp is not a pure functional language. We still have while and for loop, right? So, so let's run these two example here. So let's run the server. Um, let's run the server and then let's run the client twice because it's pretty sad if you talk by yourself, right? Let's run one. Okay, and let's run the second one. All right. So I have two clients here, okay? And this is my server, okay? And I, I, in a setting here, I can, you can, oh, you can see, oh, wait. This is my other client. Okay. In a config, usually when you, Start application, you put a lot of debugging warming, so you have a new console, a lot of, uh, of uh, information. So, of course, Ricky is connecting, and my server is here. Ricky joined the chat, okay? And Thomas is sleeping. No? Uh, <laughs> do, do you have Akka there? Uh, uh, yeah. That should be it. Well, I have a similar example coming. Uh, we're gonna be from my VM to my Mac. But yeah, actually it should be, ah, we should work this stuff together. Right. <laughs> I, could my, my I, I know you can lock my machine, but. <laughs> so Ricky say hello, it's gonna to say ciao. And Ricky say, and I, my other client received ciao, say hello. So I can communicate, right? And what it does really send a message to my server and a self dispatch to all my nodes or I can detect the single one, right? So that's pretty simple. Okay, I see some filing, that's good. It's nice feedback. That, that's pretty cool, but let's do something a little bit better. I have two example and plus the finale, okay? So let's run, okay, I, let's run this one probably better. Uh, remote deploy. Da, da, da. We got something interesting here. So as I mentioned, this is unique to F Sharp, and that's the second reason because you would love to use F Sharp. Nobody asking the first one. Damn it. So 
I configure my um, actor, let's import a 9234. Uh, this is two helper function, okay? So don't worry about the implementation. I just say want passing address, which is a string, and use a remote scope deployment. By the way, the documentation of ACA.NET is awesome. I mean, they're, they're great. And they just start um, a boot camp in ACA and um, I'm converting everything for them in F Sharp. So you have only C Sharp and F Sharp implementation and it's very easy to understand, I mean. So the spawn remote function here, we use a spawn with the E in the hand because this is for remote. And it takes some parameter, you know, my system, my address, the actor name, and the express here is a quote quotation type. Because F Sharp is smart enough to understand that this is a quote quotation, okay? Now, this is my simple implementation, and we're gonna do some more complex later. What I do, I create my actor, and then in quotation, I pass this implementation, which is just receive a message and re re reprint it in a, in a console, right? Now, and then I send messages. All right, that's cool, but this is Xamarin, okay? This is a uh, running mono, and so I might VM with install Windows and Visual Studio. This is my uh, uh, Mac OS machine, because as a good Microsoft employee, you won't have your Mac. I have a, so as you see the reference here, there is nothing beside the ACA and the serialization, Google proto uh, buffer, um, other stuff. The f there is two files in a project, file FS and program. So what does it do the program here? Well, it pretty much it does nothing. What it does, it says, okay, it starts my ACA. This is no reference. Can you see the, the, the font is too dark? Yeah. Let's see if I can change on the fly. Uh, uh, text editor, general. Oh. Yeah, default, there you go. Okay, better? Cool. So, pass the name, my console, I create my remote actor. I call it remote name just because, you know, it's remote. So, but you can go, you can call it any, whenever you want. I change my console printing in red because I don't care. I print that it's waiting and then that's it. So again, there is no implementation or anything, right? So let's run it. And okay, you see it's in red. Well, it's a remote actor listening, okay? Let's go back to my Visual Studio. Now to prove this is right, uh, what kind of color do you like to print in a remote machine? Pink? You know what, I did the same a while ago. There is not really pink here, it's magenta. It's so weird, right? It, magenta is okay. Okay. All right. So, oops, sorry, enter loop. All right. So let's load again everything until here. My helper. Oops, sorry, wrong thing. My helper local system. Okay. Now, when I select and run this function. Done, magic. I already deployed remotely this actor. Now let's go what's happened there. Something happened, it log out. Because I have heavy login, say, uh, associated, you know, I have something that derived from this actor uh, with this remote deployment, create, blah, blah, blah. Okay, something happened, okay? I communicated, yeah. So this is also This location? This no. So. As I mentioned, uh, you can set here, I put yeah. log on or start, which is it prints your configuration, the yellow part, and I put the level debug and the log level debug. There is an higher level even more than debug, I forgot, but you can put in a warming error exception, let's say, or can you remove everything without logging? All right, so, cool. So now it's deployed, so 
Oh, damn. Okay? So it's Prague, right? It's unique. So I send the message one, two times. Whoa. This is nice, right? <laughs> okay. I see some happy face. I can enjoy it here, okay? That's cool. That's pretty nice. But the final example will be, whoa, that's going to be something. Some of you are going to pay my beer properly later. So I'm going to run a quick example about supervision, something interesting, and then the finale, okay? Anybody bored, tired? Nobody fell asleep so far? Okay, cool. All right, so for this example, I show this code here, and uh, this is how you create. Uh, so as out the box, this is what is provided. If the strategy is one for one, which is applied for only one node, and the directive here is start. Now, you can change the approach, and I use pattern matching and say, when the exception arrives, if is you know argument exception stop, or directive uh, divide by zero, resume, and so on, right? And here can be more complex, right? Just for the sample, but you can do anything that you want here. So, but I'm not going to run this one because I run the a bit better, but this is more complex. So the same concept, though. But actually, this is a function that accepts the content, I mean the, the body of an actor, and create an actor, right? So the implementation is pretty simple here. Um, when I receive a number, a value here, if it's positive, it just changes the current state of my, 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 my body. If it's negative, because it's not uh, more than zero, it throw an arithmetic assumption, okay? So at this point, your actor or your person can crash down if it's not in try catch or whatever. But the supervisor is gonna catch this exception for me. Respond message actually send back to the sender my current state. Okay, I create my system, this is my, my strategy. When I get my arithmetic exception, that's the one that I manually raised, I, actually, let's do this, I restart, okay? And my supervisor, it create my, my worker, agent, and now because I create the worker inside the supervisor, the supervisor becomes the parent, so responsible, right? All right. And what I do here, I receive the message and send the message to my to my child. Well, could be some better approach, but for the sake of the presentation, I think that's that's good enough. So let's load load all this code in the repo here. Okay. Now I run this uh, um, I send this message value 5, which is positive, which is nothing going to happen. And when I send back, I ask for the response, I am, um, oh yeah, I ask, use the ask operator. So I ask for the response asynchronously, and here I use the bank operator. So the other block you run asynchronously, and print this, the state, right? So what I'm waiting, you send 5, and return 5, value receive 5. Pretty easy, right? Now, if I send negative one, there'll be an exception throw. So when I send the response back to send me the state, it was negative, so there was some exception here, and uh, it was arithmetic exception because that's what I raised. But the state is zero because it restart, right? Now, if I change strategy to resume, for instance, right? Can I load everything here again without running the code? Do, 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 load, fine, okay. Now, I get load. I send five, five. 
Now, if I send a negative number, and that's something pretty cool, this is an exception throw, but because I changed my strategy to resume, it's able to conserve the state of my, 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 my child, right? So it's not zero anymore, it's five. That's pretty cool. All right, now let's put all together what we saw so far. So we saw the remote deployment, supervision, and um, routing with a chat and whenever. So let's run the grand finale, right? So, so the grand finale is, uh, of course, a fractal. And there are three projects. The, the F-sharp, actually, I copied this pretty ugly implementation in F-sharp. In, in F sharp. So there is a share library, okay? This is what the S F sharp stands for. I use two record type. So if you're not familiar with F sharp, this is a syntactic sugar to create what it is in C sharp a class with all uh, immutable read only properties, just with get, maybe private set in your constructor. But this is my render tile. I have some helper here that just get an array of bytes, convert the images, and vice versa. Oh, yeah, go back. The, the application, I'm not going to run it right away. Usually, I, I like to run the application first to see what it does and then go through the source code. But this is interesting scenario. So what it does is uh, it will be in a WinForm application, right? They're going to divide a picture box in little tile. And then the WinForm is an actor that sends remotely to an actor to apply this uh, algorithm. And when it's done, it's on, it sends back the tile. And WinForm, with another actor, is going to uh, render this tile and compose it together to make an image. Okay. So this is the Melbrot algorithm. Uh, yeah, you can Google and copy and paste it here if you do it. The tile is an actor here and receive a render tile, which is my record type, which is the XY coordinate of my tile and the size. I do some logging. I apply some magic to this uh, um, render tile, and what is returned is a bitmap type. I don't know if you can see it. I convert an array and send back to the sender my render tile with the array of bytes. Okay. My remote actor, there is no reference of anything, doesn't know anything about just Akka. Okay. I mean, if you think it's magic, you can close it here and check. You want to come here and check? No. So, what it does here, I do some configuration. Okay. Do some file system here. Configuration. With the remote, the uh, transport TCP, local, I create my uh, my worker and just print in, in green. So there is no actor here. So I will remote deploy an actor because F sharp is awesome. We can do that. So and finally, the last piece of the code. This is a WinForm. This is the documentation. Just you know, create a picture box, a panel. And some properties don't don't worry about this. So on load event, it create my configuration for my actor, passing my host uh, my host name, my remote, my my uh, TCP protocol for communication. I create my system. Again, set my property to divide the 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 pitch box pitch box in tile. So here when we start the the, the interesting part. So the render is just a function here. It take a render tile, it convert the bitmap in image, and the, the render to the picture box in, in the win form. Okay, so far, understand what's going on. Display tile is a local actor that is just receiving the render tile. Apply the function above here, and I use um, as a spawn option dispatcher the synchronized dispatcher, which use the local synchronization context one. So there is no exception of, you know, Marshall thread exception. 
Uh, this is some comment because I was playing with uh, other stuff, but so I use a remote scope. This is the address of my worker, which is this for name here, okay? So I access this by address. The render here, and I, because the render, it will be the name of the actor remotely, but I can name here because I remote deploy. This is so cool, right? So I remote deploy this actor, this entire render, which is coming from the library here, okay? This is what I will remote deploy, which is, uh, the code quotation is pretty cool. He said that this is a uh, Mandelbrot function here, and if it's not a body of the actor, it creates the arbitrary syntax tree for you, okay? So I remote deploy this actor, and I pass, you know, my my router here, oh, damn it, my router, and then I send to the actor, remote actor, the portion of my feature box, okay? Okay, let's run this example. First I run, of course, the remote. And again, there is no implementation or anything here. So there is logging for the, 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 the configuration. Now I run my fractal. Ta -ta -ta. Okay, that's the picture box. This is my remote actor. It starts to, to, to loop what's going on as remoting. And here, I send the tile and it receive back, you know, my, my tile with some images here, right? This is pretty cool as implemented, right? Very cool. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, now let's do something a bit better. What's happened now? I will spawn 16 of these remote agents, right, to my system. And it will receive the message and use a old fashioned round robin algorithm. Um, in parallel, well, this for core, but in parallel, handle this message. So, compile this. Um, let's run the remote. Thank you, Thomas, for your help. I really appreciate it. Now, I really want a feedback here, so give me some motivation, some, some. All right. start to be faster, right? And if you check the, the, the process here, it is open, <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's 100%, right? And <laughs> so you can see it's stuck there, but because there are so many, they arrive at the same time, so you can see like in one point, done. That's pretty cool, right? The in the, yeah, in the, in the tile, yeah. Ah, yeah, that could be. You're right. You're right. Smart guy. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> I think I think it's pretty cool, right? Out, and that you can extract there in a. Huh? Oh come on. Ah, I know what you're talking about. The. Well, before moving on, any question about the code that we saw so far? I have other sample. I don't want to stay here all night because I start to be thirsty. Yeah. I mean, huh? Yeah. Okay. That's taking so. So, let me say uh, if I understand your question. You mean that, um, like, there if you create, if you create a router, okay, like in this case, as an example, and 
the, you can tell the router to create 16 instances, right? So you just have to do send a message to the router, which is an actor. I call it a router because in the end it's going to work like a router, right? And it will take care of send a message to all the actors that belong in the retirement. At that point, you have to, um, that's what I was playing here. So there are different, um, there are two approaches. One is almost ready, it's not out there yet, but it will be released soon. The other one, you had to manually create your actor, or, and then create a round robin pool, but actually you pass the instance of the actor. The speech, I mean, the, the, the reference to the actor, not the speech. Instance. Now, this actor here, in this case, they're all local, but this can be remote in different nodes. And the, the trick part is that one of the actors can be a router on a different machine, too. So when you send a message to this actor that belongs to this pool, right? Let's say this actor is a, a router in a remote machine, right? So when you send a message to this router, it can care all the rest of the nodes. So it, it starts to build up your instruction. Yeah. Uh, usually you have, you, yeah, you could do that. I rather have, because they're so cheap, I rather to have one instance per process and create another process. Because, because my next slide is about a few gaps there. So, so your answer, I mean, answer your question on the second point, where they're so cheap, but you are a constraint to the supervisor type or, or um, strategies. So you can have only one strategy for the higher level on your nodes. But you can have multiple. I mean, they're so cheap, just create as many supervisors you want, as many nodes you want, right? Because uh, if you rec remember, they're like 2.7 million per gig. So just create as many you want. So at this point, I rather create a system per process and just spawn a different process and have all my actor dedicated there. But you still have uh, one uh, root level yeah. system? Per process. Level no, they never fail. They never <laughs> fail. They never fail there because that's the high level one. Before, uh, so we never check that uh, the, 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 the strategy is a resume, restart, or it is all escalate can escalate until the top. But if you remember, there was the, the dash user, which is uh, called a guard. And as it, the name implies, it's really a guard to protect the system, right? It stopped there, nothing can go above that. So the system is very well protected, which is your arrow kernel will, will never fall down, promise you, unless you unplug your machine. Yeah. So, Single responsibility principle, meaning that, uh, again, actor chip, just what, what, what I think is a better, best approach is um, a one behavior for actor. And so you know what it does, but also at this point, it's easy to compose them, right? So you can forward the message. When the ma ma an actor completes the computation, can send the message forward to another actor. And because you know um, what they do, because, you know, they do only one thing, it's easy for you to, to, to build the kind of system. And maybe, you know, use a pipeline strategy, a pattern to pipeline a different kind of actor. And uh, keep everything kind of sim simple and uh, prefer fire and forget than, um, so the tell versus ask. The ask are some, you know, <coughs> constraint because you have to ask until run a single instead of waiting for the response. Like in my last awesome example, the actor was sending with the tell, do some computation, and when it was done, the other actor was telling back to the second actor. I had two actors in my WinSpot. One was dispatching the main manager to my uh, picture box, and the other one was sending tile. So I really had a loop with all tell, tell, no ask. But, and of course, avoid premature optimization. Stand we were out in one, and no, you know, 16 or 64. But there is a lot of the material like if you check online, there is this um, test toolkit for ACA, and really provide out the box that running that test, it make your system run all single threaded. So, so you really um, step through the process, the flow, 
they follow the flow of your message through your system without, you know, sometimes following a different thread or vice versa. So it's really, really nice. Pro and cons. The only cons that I have is that when you work in a, you really have some transactions, like you have a, some notification, some agreement that something uh, uh, is completed successfully, you know, that probably the actor model is not uh, your best choice. But other than that, I think you provide the box a unique programming model to uh, write a concurrent application, scaling up and scaling out without, you know, change any, change any of your code. So summarize, just go reactive. That we, we, we said that, right? This is, uh, today we are living in this distributed system era. So cloud compute is there, right? And uh, actor definitely resolve your problem. All right, so question, hopefully answer, because that's awesome resources. Actually, in the book that I gave away tonight, there is a chapter about how you use uh, the guy that built Cricket, which is a framework for F Sharp. They do almost the same thing. It's a very nice chapter, easy to read, and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's very interesting how they, they approach the concurrency model there. And this is my information. Get my GitHub here and the ACA actor model. You can download all the code, the slides, everything to play with. That's all. Is a, it's not like Erlang, right, bytes code, but um, it's, it's serialized the pen serialization. Uh, for what, it's, I'm not sure, but what it does seems really, uh, it just serializes as a, um, how do you can tell Thomas, the uh, computational expression? The yeah, code, I, was, I was wondering what they do there, because it's a binary file, you have the like extra cricket code with it, mm -hmm. and then you could serialize that first and send it around, and then actually you have like copy over the binary, right? And then stuff would finish. Send it with the file, or maybe there's a binary there. Already. I, I think I think it's just use a yeah, binary, but I'm not but sure I about. I think it. you have like most of the code is really just distributed to all the nodes in the binary form, but then the things you want to invoke. In the quotation, that's yeah, serialized. Yeah, serialized and deployed. So it's kind of there. And then it reconstructs it there and distributes it. That's my guess. Yeah. No, well, wait, there is no the the the, the, the actual implementation is not the LL share, right? Yeah, th that's that you're talking about the message type. Yeah. yeah, that's why, especially when you deploy remotely, like I, I did, you don't have, you recommend to don't use a type actor, but untyped, because it's easy to swap the implementation, the behavior, but the signature is a sport, you cannot replace that, right? Like Erlang is dynamic language, you can do it in Erlang, because this is it. But in F sharp, statically type or C sharp, so for that specific scenario, there is no, an actor really doesn't know, if he's on type, he shouldn't know what kind of type message you're receiving. You handle it. So at that point, you deploy a behavior that can pattern match the message that you know you're going to send, that the actor doesn't know because of the type, right? Make sense?
this is defined out as the fixed cost. And then indirectly, there are just the, the, the total cost, the price, mm -hmm. which is some unit. But uh, the two terms are the sub S and the sub E. A different what? Different? Say it again. Sub S is the sub E. And I mean, oh. the S must have no. different functions of conversion. Meaning, no, also. No. no when, when you remote deploy, you're going to clean up completely the behavior. So there is no anything that is. So whenever you send, it's, it's new. So. Yeah, the monitoring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then there is another nice library beside the test toolkit. Is the monitoring to monitor or yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's like the the scala, the, the JVM one. Right. Right. And there is another library that I didn't uh, introduce here, but so you remember that the supervisor supervision example that if um, your child has an exception, you can resume and conserve the state. Right? This is all in memory. There is a functionality that if you replace the behavior with the persistent <coughs> behavior. So actually you can perceive the state if something happened in a database, file system, whatever, right? But that was okay. And, and, and you use pattern matching here. Yeah. And it is exhaustive pattern matching. Yeah. Uh, always. So it is something well, like that uh, that that uh, message of that letter message box. Because in Akka and Scala version, it is something called uh, that letter. Right, mailbox. right. So, yeah, so um, you have two two options here. Well, first of all, pattern matching is supposed to be exhausting. F sharp, warm you, if it's not, warm. Uh, it, it give you a warming, right? Yeah. But it lets anyways compile and go on. I mean, it's your foot, right? When should be foot. But um, out of the box, there is uh, a method to unhandle messages. So it's something that it doesn't know how to handle. Mm -hmm. That's what it's kicked in. And uh, yeah, you can implement it for, for debugging and and, uh, and uh, that letter, that, that's the best approach. But most of the time, I don't know. Yeah, basically, it's easier than just to Yeah. A mixtape in the right. Right. Yeah. 